On? Anything? Is it on? It should on. Is that the lens? Yeah, it's on. All right. Well, um, thanks all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people to showing up to this session as a featured speaker. I'm really honored the amount of uh, publicity for this session and push forward for this community to speak about why Drupal Association is actually a good thing, which of course has nothing to do with this. This is me about 20 years ago when I was a young, hopeful young man, <laughs> long haired, hippie beard, and all that hippie bullshit. This is me today. This is my whole name. To make it a little bit shorter, we can do it like this, Morton Birch. To do this, you will see a small spelling error. This is a thing I do in this community. I bitch and moan about stuff. I think that's dumb. I try to do it in a positive way. That's just an act. It's really because I am a bitch. Um, somebody thinks I'm a nice guy. That's not really true. Anyways, this is my little company. We do a lot of stickers. And I will have a sticker for each one of you, all nine. Um, <laughs> I bring a lot of Viking love to this community, which basically means cut the fucking crap and get on with it. That's a thing I really like. And that one, Mary, she do say hi. <laughs> hi, Drupal Con Sydney. I swing by and thought, well, for the horses, cousin Mary is, of course, always a part of us, so it's a good thing. This is actually my sponsor, Tin Collective, who actually paid for me to get down here. And what a, if anybody have a Twitter client, can you send her a tweet and say, hey, thank you, Morton. Oh, thank you, Georgie, to send Morton down here. Um, I am might going to do this talk again in about a week in Melbourne. Um, of course, Melbourne actually ponied up compared to what Sydney can figure. So go Melbourne. Um, how many of here is actually members of the Drupal Association? We have one staff member here who's not a member. It's, it's actually pretty easy, and it's only $30 a year. And so you just click up here and say become a member, and then you can get like t-shirts and stuff that says Drupal, and you could be epic. If we look at this whole Drupal uh, project, um, one of the first statements I heard about Drupal was that, that you know, all CMS sucks, um, but Drupal sucks less than all the others. It's kind of been a, a mantra in this community all, over the years, which is a good thing. Um, but we rolled back about 10 years ago when it actually was called drop.org, and this shows how Good away, we're actually starting out. We're starting out on a spelling error. So it should have been Dorp, which means city in Dutch. Um, it turned out to be Drop instead, which is Drupal in Dutch. Hello. Um, so that's, of course, a good way to start. The first CMS, com CMS commit comes in about 2000. The same thing with this beautiful, beautiful logo, especially the slogan, Tears of Technology. I think it's, a, it's a, a saying that we have seen a lot of in the, the issue queues over the years. Um, it actually looks like this at this point in, in October 2000. It gets a huge design upgrade a couple of months later. It really shows that this community is based for designers um, and really takes care of that part. This is clearly a nerd and geek project. Um, and we look at the whole project. The first idea of it was, was actually total world domination. This is the initial first post that actually sets the start of this whole adventure for 15th of January, 2001, which makes us soon to be a teenager, so we can make a lot of trouble. I can see a lot of forks and a lot of fun coming up the next couple of years. Um, the fun thing when we look at the second release uh, a couple of months later, and we only have a couple of months between each release. That says a lot of the code base at this point. Two months instead of two years. Uh, but the friendly but small community is small. We could actually change it a little bit. Later on, um, we get spread Firefox, Drupal Docs through the 04 to 07. Um, actually, get the first Drupal book release about seven years ago. jQuery gets into the Drupal project, which made jQuery kind of explode at that point. It was a very tiny project, um, which, by the way, caused a shit ton of trouble in the community. I think Kevin can remember some of the long, long, hard discussion about why we should not rely on JavaScript to do anything because nobody used JavaScript for anything, right? Um, anyway, the association is, is born in 2007. Uh, we get the whitehouse.gov in, which kind of made everything blow up and shit ton of business rolled in, which was a good thing. Apparently, everybody thought now Drupal was the, was the new hot shit. It was kind of the old hot shit and still is the hot shit. Um, we got Symphony now into Drupal, which is, is even more exciting. We killed CVS, which is a great thing for a lot of us, so we can actually begin to contribute. 
we got an office in Portland, so we actually got a, really got a staff here, which is an interesting thing. This is the historical moment when Git finally came into Drupal, and that was a lot of nerds who celebrated that day. Because CVS is a piece of shit, and I hated it with such a passion. I actually have wrote haiku poems for it. <laughs> I am not kidding. Um, but one of the things I've, I've learned over the years in this Drupal thing is actually that this whole gathering of geeks that we have, um, which is a kind of a celebration of Drupal. People who know this guy, this is Drum. Neil Drum, back in Antwerp, about 2006. We have Dries up here. We have uh, uh, various people that couple of Moshe is here. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, kind of don't have all the names of the. There's like four or five left. Portland in 2005. That was not a DrupalCon, by the way. It was part of OSCON, uh, which happened again in Amsterdam. This was actually the first time that we had um, a panel discussion at a DrupalCon, a Drupal event. That's not a good thing to do in Amsterdam. Apparently, people were a bit tired. That, that day, that function. So it, it was mainly, uh, as far as I know, kind of an epic fail. Um, Vancouver, the really great thing about this is, oh, thank you. Let's just roll back to this one. Why are you teasing me this way? I don't hate you, you hate me. Good. Um, Dries, a very, very young version of Dries, especially this is the very first Drupal t-shirt that actually ever came out. Um, I think what he's trying to demonstrate here is the published option on a note. Um, Brussels, 2006, we have WebChick here. I'm there as well. We have Andreas, who's down. Today is chief architect of Podio. Komal works at Twitter. We have a bunch of, it's kind of actually fun to go in and, and look how many of these people are still in the community. About 60%. Oh, and there might be trees as well. Yahoo at Sunnywell. We did not take a picture here, which was really, really dumb. This was back when Yahoo still was something. Now they have Flickr, that's it. But that was kind of a big thing. Um, the conference sold out so quick that we could not even believe it at that point. Like, holy crap, we sold 400 tickets to a conference. <laughs> and we did the same thing six, years, six months later in Barcelona, which was um, actually the first time I heard a person go up on stage and actually say, I'm sorry for the code that they did. This was Jeff Eaton, who made a public excuse for Form API, which have destroyed so many lives at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of also shows me a way of how uh, this Drupal community works. It's OK to fuck up. We all do that. Um, Boston, now we're beginning to be so many people who cannot even be in a photo anymore. 2008, 850 attendees. We went to Seged right after that. Seged is the way the fuck out there in Hungary. It's not even the capital. It's like a student city, three hours away in small little trains going through old Eastern Europe. Not Eastern Europe, by the way, Central Europe. It's very important to remember that. That's Central Europe. I learned that the hard way. Um, DC, we, we crossed at 1,000 users, which um, if you can see here, this is one of my fave pictures still from DrupalCon. Um, after that, Paris, 850 attendees. We should learn in the future to actually be better to, to make our photos. Um, San Francisco, 3,000 users, attendees. The week and a half after Steve Jobs actually came out with the, with the iPad, we were, we were this close to breaking the amount of, of units and um, uh, you know, simultaneous uh, connections at that point. Apple beat us. We were kind of bumped on that. Um, Copenhagen, which I was personally a leader of, which was still, still think this is the best picture we have from a DrupalCon. That's just me. Um, Chicago, now people are beginning to get married at DrupalCons. I mean, <coughs> London, 1800. Sorry, Croydon, <laughs> uh, 1800 attendees. Uh, and that was a riot. I mean, stuff were on fire on that conference. Um, Denver, I have no idea how many came to Denver. Holy crap. Um, so we're up on a number now where you're pretty sure you're not going to meet anybody unless you prearrange stuff with them. Uh, Munich had only 1,800 attendees, which is practically the same. When you're up at that number, it doesn't really matter. Um, and we're even doing small events now, like Front End United, that had about 200 attendees. That we've go six years back, that was the size of a DrupalCon, and this is only for Front End nerds. Um, and there's kind of a, this cult of Drupal that have started out around this whole these events. Um, and one of the things that I mean, we have that, that very, very first time when you're ready for, your, for the Drupal chair to be popped. 
and you think it's going to be easy, and you have now experienced the Drupal learning curve. <laughs> and, and the thing is that we have ModX, WordPress, Joomla, all the other good things. It's kind of easy, like a slow curve you learn and you understand. And then we have Drupal, which is basically running into a flat wall. <laughs> More and sometimes feels like the wall actually hunts you and smacks you down, <laughs> and you cannot get away from it. And the, the thing that I've very, very early learned that it's actually, if you need help, there's always somebody to help you because we're beginning to be that, that many people and kind of built into the DNA. Of course you want to help other people because, well, first of all, if you help them, they're going to probably help you. And it feels good to show everybody else that you are badass at this thing where you just click three places or show how that form API works. Um, and it kind of, uh, we, have, we have people who, I mean, it, it's becoming, uh, this is Drupal Lick. That's his handle. He sent me this picture after, after I sent him a, a bucket of stickers. He then put that sticker on his leg. That leg is now, by the way, covered in Drupal stickers. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It's, it's pretty extreme. We even have, I mean, you we got to download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal,
then you begin to need a, some kind of management. Um, but actually, the thing I think that's really the, the, the interesting thing here, the amount of fucking power you suddenly got. This is from JubilCon in Chicago, where um, Microsoft publicly says, sorry, Fire E6, to the JubilCon. I mean, if we had been four people down in the basement making the most epic system ever that just was perfect in any way, do anybody think that Microsoft would even give a fuck? This might, might be a, a dumb, stupid little uh, you know, marketing stunt, but I really don't care. Microsoft said, Microsoft said sorry to us for IE6. They did not say sorry to the rest of the world. It was us they said that to. I think that's fucking epic, to be honest. I mean, this shit runs on about 2% of the, whole <laughs> the world's websites. Mm, that feels good. And that demands a bro fist. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what we it kind of ended up, uh, up being, as I see, like this kind of this, this two-legged monster where we're beginning to, we have created its own, I mean, its own thing. When we have people who are showing up to a DrupalCon not to attend the DrupalCon, at that point, then we've, I mean, in my mind, we've kind of changed it all, all around. And we kind of have these different groups of people. We have the developers. And developers really like things that work. Like crap in, crap out, this stuff works. Then, of course, we have the designers. And designers really like things that look good. That's just a thing that they like. They don't agree upon anything. There might be a discussion about typography or you know, whatever. We have our own little thoughts. <laughs> we have the DevOps, who was also beginning to become a part of this whole thing. Um, we have UX people coming in now. I actually want to have an opinion, have an idea of what's going on here. We have the suits that's, <laughs> that's leaking in. And we have this whole group of open source hippies that's com coming around. And the whole thing is, how do we get all these, these different groups to work together? I mean, just getting DevOps and developers in the same room to actually agree on things, and then put a design on top of that, that ain't going to happen easy. Um, and the whole thing is, can we even, can we even live, live together? And I pretty much think that the... Well, the sad news here is, is actually that in the bottom line, and even me as a happy little hippie, is that if we don't have any money, we don't have any code. If we don't have no code, we don't have any money. So we kind of begin to depend on each other. And there's no way really, really around that. So, I mean, the success here is actually just to hog it out. Just to accept the fact that, well, we're going to have some companies who are going to push in a shit ton of money, and we're going to pay some people to doing some stuff. And that's just how it is. Um, and, and we, all, we all really want to claim this, this ownership of this product. I mean, I have my front end that I, I live and breathe to, to change and make so perfect. We have other people who want to make that whole database abstraction with abstraction on. All these small things. And when all that kind of comes together and we form this community where we actually, instead of hating on each other, begin to accepting that n not everybody else than you actually have the right opinion. Then things actually begin to grow, um, and it's it's not easy. At, at some point, we are big ass fat fucking rhino that really want to be that beautiful little creature, um, and and it's 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 kind of a, a maybe it's a, you know a, sh a shared responsibility that we actually have to each other. When you download that Drupal the first time and begin to use it, it begins to become a thing that you just you know when you give back, you actually get more. Um, and that's where this whole, there's uh, some buttons uh, walking around the community a couple of years ago that was like, hey, you're the theme to my module. No, I'm the module to your theme. It's corny as fuck. But it kind of shows this whole idea of actually how, how we begin to use each other better and, and not so much like hating on it. Um, this is uh, a, a quote I got out of the Art of Community by Juni Wagon, which is pretty much epic. It's, that the whole thing about if we want to have this to work, we actually need to like walk forward together at some point. It, if we run around in small circles and just scream and shout and battle each other, we will not succeed. A thing that's interesting in this community is even though we have existed in 10 years, there's only been one fork. Uh, Dean Space back in 2005, and they rolled back into Drupal 4.5. So there's been like one little dropout, and that was it. So either people are uh, walking away from the project completely and <laughs> will not touch it anymore, or they kind of stays in the in the same kind of the same ground. Um, and this is kind of I mean I like this idea of marching forward because that's kind of a back to my Viking roots. This is what we understand like that way, LA, LA. Or if you see the tour, venga, 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 venga. I'm apparently the only one here who watches cycling, right? 
Yes, God, that joke did not work well. Well, but the directions that we need to take a community is kind of a thing that can be hard. If we just do it as we used to do, then it would be a long discussion and we would not move forward at all. So figuring out all of this stuff is actually demanding a kind of group on top of it who can kind of set the rules, set the boundaries on making sure stuff works. This is a quote I have from a, a dude I know that pretty much says how he felt about the association. Uh, he loves Drupal, but he doesn't give a fuck about the Drupal Association. Well, <laughs> we will not tell anybody his name. Um, I think this is very, um, this is not an unnormal way of feeling about the association and the Drupal community today. And there's reasons for that. I mean, it has not been good to be open. It's not been good to doing all the right things. It just, that's just how it is. Um, but the thing that it needs is we need some kind of organization of all these people. If we have 20,000 20, plus developers and we have a million users and we have how many events a year and all this thing, I mean, we can just run around full frontal anarchy. Everybody wants, wants different way. Or we can actually try to like find a, a common path to all. Um, one of the first thing, things we could begin to is actually to look up what kind of people we have that provides this leadership. This is, by the way, the the Drupal Association board. This is me. This is me. This is Dries. Uh, we don't have the new leader of it all, Holly. Hi, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> um, she will be responsible for everything in the next couple of years, right? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, we have a lovely staff that actually do work for us. Um, it's been hard for a lot of people to figure out what the staff actually does. One thing the staff actually does is being at DrupalCon and making sure shit actually works. That there is chairs here, that there's coffee and water and food and drinks and a printer that works and all this stuff. I mean, and if anybody ever tried to do a DrupalCon by themselves, and I've tried this on my own body, that's about at least a thousand hours of work. Doing that alongside your normal job that pretty much means that you're not going to be able to breathe for a year. Um, and that's just, if we have events that, that has 3,000 people in it, there's no way around it. We need to have a staff. Um, we even have our own little server team. It's a bunch of nerds, but they keep, keep the stuff running. Um, and the, one of the things that maybe the Drupal Association has not been good at doing is actually telling what it is that it does. And it's, it's not so much things that they actually, as far as I know, they do even as a board member. But it's kind of important, like keeping the lights on, making sure we actually have a D.O. that fucking works. So you can actually go to the website. I mean, we had a couple of problems earlier, a bunch of years ago, where actually the server burned down. Um, we now have people to take care of that. We actually have a bill to pay, because with a million users, you don't get free access anymore, free hosting anymore. Um, legal stuff, when somebody fucks with the GPL, there's actually organization to take care of that so we don't have to think about it. Um, Drupal cons because they're big as fuck and it costs a shit ton of money and they provide us a shit ton of money which can make us do even more things and actually can make give us an opportunity to give people things to make stuff happen which I think is pretty awesome. Even code sprints can be <laughs> is, is kind of a thing. I mean when we have two big Drupal cons and now this small Drupal con down here and we have these code sprints which kind of we meet, we code, we develop, and getting all that shit settled up, it's demanding at DrupalCon, else we would not be able to get all these people into the same room. Um, even like forward planning is a, is a simple thing like, oh, by the way, we think we want to have a DrupalCon down in Sydney, how do we do that? If we didn't have a staff to take care of that shit, it would never be able to happen. Then it would be pure volunteer work, somebody who had the time for that period, and it, Basically, it would not work. We would not be able to get forward. We did have growing pains in 2012. I mean, we have an office now in Portland. We have structural changes all around. So 2012 were maybe not the best year. Um, but then it's good at 2013. Because, uh, I mean, in that year, we, we know that, I mean, and we just know this because we now have, we have flames on it. I will make sure you get a man on wall. I will make sure that this gets to your office, Holly. I will make sure of that. This is the Drupal Association 2013. 
Apparently, the people of Jubal, the Republic of Jubal, apparently have elected me in on one of the seats of this Jubal Association. And that means that we have a little bit more of axe wielding, a little bit less of politeness. Um, but all of this stuff, and the thing is that, I mean, the Jubal Association have been here for five years. And 2012 maybe did not go as well as it could, but we do know that shit takes time. And if we take that most essential piece of thing that we have in the community code, let's look at one of the, actually the, one of the very first issues we had in Drupal. Let a user delete his own account. Simple, right? This is where you say, yes, it's simple. Nod, come, nod and smile, simple, simple, simple. Look at the date, 2001. Most mans up and says, yes, I have signed this one to myself. A month later, just curious, is there any progress in this delete user's own account? And most now gives in. You say it, it's, it's my nemesis. I cannot get this done. I am done. It's over. Anyone else? It should be possible to delete a, delete a user account. This is in 2002. We have to go into 2009 before somebody finally figured out how to do this and all the complex levels of stuff. That actually means that we have an issue that's created in 2001, an issue that's fixed in 2009, but it's not actually out before 2011. That's 10 fucking years to fix a thing that we thought was just a small little problem. Small little problem. It's not a small problem. It's complicated as fuck. And unless we accept that some things just take a little bit more time, we might think we have the right answer, but I mean, th and this was just a small thing. When we begin to move around with almost a million users, 20,000 plus developers, a shit ton of people who are that devoted to a product because it's open source. So now they, they both comes in with their money and also with their heart into the project. That just makes things complicated. Um, and that's kind of the, the whole thing is that we, we, we came for this code thing and, and we, uh, I mean, we're staying, at, at the end of we're staying for the community. That's. That's, that's kind of the things, at least, that I can see. It's like, oh, I, I don't agree with all the code, but it's, it's kind of a second family you have around here. I mean, we did jump on a plane just to fly for 22 hours to get here, to see the sun rise at 6 instead of 8 in the morning, and talk Drupal in three days. And then they'll roll back and do the same in about four months again, and six months again, and so forth. Just kind of a thing that you just do. If anybody has feedback on this, I've made this find a tiny URL. Um, actually, one of the last thing I want to show here is, actually, this is actually sponsored by the Drupal Associates. So starting with community, what does community mean to us? More and more, I'm falling in love with the community. Drupal is built by an open source community of volunteers, so the software stays up to date and current. Well, one of the great things about the Drupal community is they do actually get together. I think one of the main things is that you're using tried and tested code. The system's been around for 10 years now. Working together for something that's more than just yourself. It's more than just being able to finish the next project. It's more than just developing a bit of code that you're going to use once and forget about it. It's about a bunch of you challenging each other's ideas. It means you actually get to meet the people that build the core modules and, and, and the big modules face to face. Value for money. As a local authority, especially in the current financial climate, value for money has got to be the greatest draw on Drupal. The software itself is free. There's a whole worldwide team of Drupal developers go and choose from to build your solution. We're very keen to encourage other local authorities to start using Drupal for their content management system. We think it's a waste of money for public sector organisations to reinvent the wheel when they could group together. Okay, so let's talk about Drupal and maturity. What does it mean to be a mature system? A mature system means that you get a very solid and stable environment. It's very secure and it's very scalable. And if there's an issue, someone would have dealt with it by now. Constant development of anything means that you're refining and refining. It's just going to get better and better, really. I think Drupal's been quietly building and beavering away in the background, and I think it's now finally starting to come of age and starting to hit the uh, mainstream. 
was a very modular system, so you can build a range of different sites. So it will give you that flexibility to be able to shape it to what you want. There's a, somewhere like 10,000 modules available. You can really plug in whatever you like, so you think of it in terms of construction, then you're, you know, you're adding modules, you're adding those blocks as and when you need the functionality. Um, you can take those away at any time, you can update them, you can build your own blocks. So it, it really is the ultimate flexible system. You don't need to know where you're going because you know it will be able to take you there. That was not me who did the video. <laughs> it's actually sponsored by the Drupal Association through one of these grants, but nobody knew. And that's one of the things we're going to change in 2013. So thank you, my good friends, everybody I actually almost know for coming to this epic session. <laughs> it's been enjoyable. I kept it down to more than three slides a minute, <laughs> which I think is pretty rock. Um, but thank you. If anybody have any kind of questions, that lady in orange down there, you? No, no, no. I'm, I'm good. You're good. OK. Yeah, a little shy. Questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Drupal Association is still a, a little short of money. So apparently don't, they don't think that, that, that fun is a part of DrupalCons. It's uh, all about business. That's another thing we will change in 2013. The smoke machine will return in Portland. Uh, I've even heard rumors of male strippers as well. Challenge accepted. <laughs> And I now have a director of the whole Drupal events that looks a little bit tired. <laughs> little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for that. Do we have a replacement for him? <laughs> All right. Thanks for coming. <laughs>